I'm Luke Beard. I'm Chris Green. I'm Riley Gunter. And I'm Nash Rainey. And we are the, the Backups. Backups. All right, let's go right into the NBA. Joel Embiid has pretty much lost his MVP season. Yeah. Uh, you have to play 65 games according to a new rule. He's expected to miss four more weeks. It's impossible for him to win it if he doesn't play these games. Unfortunately, because he is having the best season of his career, he's averaging, what, 36? Yeah. Something ridiculous. 36, like 12, something like that. He's having an unreal year, and he's – it feels like he keeps heating up. Like he's not slowing down, but he keeps getting injured, and that's that's starting him off course this year. It it feels like the MVP will have an asterisk next to their name just because everyone knows Joel deserves it, but availability is the best ability. Mm-hmm. Uh, 76ers are looking terrible without him. Yeah, they can't win games without yeah. Joel, which is understandable. Yeah, I mean, you missing a uh, all NBA first team player, so the biggest part of your entire team. Yeah. He's he's pretty much not your whole offense, but he's a fair majority of your yeah, offense majority, and yeah. your uh, your interior defense. Right. It's hard to lose that and expect to win a lot of games. Exactly, and it's just the injury. Is I don't I don't think it's just four more weeks. I feel like it's going to be longer than, than more than four. It, it yeah. feels like a that situation with Kawhi in the playoffs a couple of years yeah. back, and they kept saying he'd be back and yeah. end up being a, a I feel torn like, ACL. Yeah, I feel like it's, he won't probably won't be back to yeah. at best. Maybe like round one of the playoffs. Yeah. Round two. That. And it kind of, the injury also kind of worried me from like the future because, you know. It, it's hard to, if you're a big man, it's hard to play with knee yeah, injuries. Like it, it, it's, it, we saw it happen like, yeah. like a Bill Walton. Yeah. Completely ruined his career. But I do think Joel's pretty tough. I mean, early in his career, he was facing injuries yeah, and yeah. he was able to bounce back. And I think he's at that level now where he's, he's not super old. But but I think he can still bounce up, back. Yeah. I would say age trying to play a factor into it. It's hard to, especially being that big, it's hard yeah. to balance age and size and remain dominant right. for very long. Yeah. You see with a lot of the, the NBA guys, uh, off the top of my head, I mean, uh, Arida Sabonis, he was huge, like 7'3", right. massive, and he just, he was getting old quick. Yeah. With all these big guys, you get old quick. I think Wimby has a has a build that will keep him around longer. Yeah. Just because he's skinny. Yeah. Uh, Joe Embiid's, like, bulky, he's really muscular, like, he's a bigger dude, so it's kind of hard to to maintain that, yeah, and yeah. as well as maintaining like a healthy body, which right. is super unfortunate because he is really fun to watch, and I think he's gonna be one of those guys. It's like when he's gone, you're gonna realize like no one appreciated yeah. him enough, right? And I think that's just something we have to realize, even though he can't succeed in the playoffs. Yeah. But he you also hasn't had a great team is, built around him. Yeah, I, I had I had to learn to call him with it with him and Harden. I just had to learn to call him with it. I think they could have made a deep run this year, too. I really do. I think Maxie's taking that they next step. Yeah. He's legit. I mean, Tobias Harris is... Well, he want to be. He right? can play. Like, he's good. Yeah, he's good. They have the necessary the assets players to, to yeah. succeed. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just because that team changes so much. You know, they get hard in one year. They lose them right after. Uh, Simmons plays really well for a year, too. He just doesn't play, and then yeah. they lose him. It, when you're losing so many guys that you thought were going to be like build the future of your team, it's hard to continue to succeed. And I think that's what uh, that's what Joel Embiid has kind of had to face. That yeah. he yeah. he's he's I think the one guy that isn't expendable for this team. Yeah, maybe Maxi now the way he's built himself up. Right. Then Trey Young and Scotty Barnes named as All Star reserves. I was a little surprised Trey wasn't in the. I mean, yeah, I, I, like, the lineup of. Okay, I, I felt like Trey had started off the year kind of slow. Yeah. So, but I still thought he was like he still should have. He's been bounced back far yeah. enough, right? And, and just, right after, yeah. right after, that's how you respond to like being snubbed from an All Star game. Like he went off. Every every game he was having, twenty seven ten or thirty and ten. After that, he, he playing well. And Scotty Barnes, I'm, as a Toronto fan, I'm happy to see him. As an All Star, like he deserves it. He, yeah, he been, he been hooping this year. He yeah. got he got better better at shooting, better at rebounding, better at dribbling. He got better at everything. So I'm I'm happy to see him as an All Star this year. Yeah, we didn't really get to talk about the reserves last week. They weren't out. I yeah, they, yeah, All Star. We uh, we talked about it, but just looking at the reserve list for the East, you have Bam, who's a really good player. Who isn't playing? Who's injured? Uh, Embiid and Julius Randle. Okay, I forgot about Embiid. I don't know how I knew Randle was. Uh, so Bam will probably, I'm guessing he'll bump into that starting role. Yeah. Would be my best guess. Uh, Paolo, who's had a fantastic season. I'm really happy with what the Magic have been doing. They're a fun team to watch. Yeah, uh, the theme song. yeah they have the best song in basketball. It's, it's hard to beat this Orlando Magic team right now. Especially, there's a lot of good players on that team. Yeah. And it's like, 
finally the drafting is caught up and they have yeah. been able to build around you know one guy and I think that one guy is going to be Paolo. I think he has a really good supporting cast. I think they'll they'll make a playoff run, probably not a super deep one, yeah. but I could see him getting out of the first round. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, but yeah, Scotty Barnes as an injury replacement. Really thought he could have been a guy that really would have been in. Uh, it was understandable why he didn't make it, but yeah, some the other forward play has just yeah. been so good in the East of the guys who are so in I, here. I wasn't mad about that, but it's, I'm happy to see him in. Yeah. Jalen Brown deserved. I mean, yeah. I think we all agree that the Celtics deserved both of their guys. Yeah, you can't keep putting them up. It's, it's hard to, to not put in two guys from a team that, that from the best team in the NBA at this current, right. like, as we're recording this, they are the best team in the NBA. It's hard to not put two guys in when you're – it feels like they're like miles ahead of these teams too, which I am a fan. So that is obviously you know a little bit of why I'm saying it. But yeah. it just it doesn't really feel like anyone in the East is really touching the team right now, especially with you know injuries to the Sixers, uh, maybe the Bucks. But uh, they I just see, fired their head coach. The Bucks, kind of, I'm, I'm worried on the Bucks because like they just, one after game, what happened last year, I'm not sure. Yeah, like one game they look great, and then they next game they look I think, sloppy. Like, I think they've lost their. I guess their identity defensively. I, I think like, I think that's kind of. I don't know if this is a bad take. I think the Cavs might be more of a threat for. I think it's a good Cavs team. I just don't know if they're going to make a super deep run. They, I feel like they're very yeah. similar to last year. They're just a little more experienced. They, I, I think they might. They, they, I they, could see them in the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. That wouldn't shock me. I could see them making it that far. I don't think the Heat make it as far as they have recently. Yeah, no. I do think Eric Spolstra is a guy who knows how to succeed in the playoffs. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine, man. I'm right. just, I, yeah, I didn't want to interrupt. You were really. He was really smiling. You were cooking there. I looked yeah. over there. I, I, but I don't think the Heat make as deep of a run as they typically do. Yeah. I do like the Heat team, but I don't, I don't, they I don't do always turn up in the playoffs, though, so there's no way for me to just say, oh, they're not making it. I think Terry Rozier is a good addition. Yeah. Uh, you know, he was the best player on the Hornets, and then he's just kind of gone. He has he was the best player this season. Without him or Miles Bridges, realistic. Yeah, Terry Rozier is the best player on the Hornets this yeah. season. Yeah. Uh, and I'll say Brandon Miller's had yeah. a really, really but, good but season. I'm excited more. to see him play. If yeah, if if there was one silver lining to this season, I mean, it was Brandon. It has been Brandon Miller. He keeps putting in pretty good performance. And he's Leaky Black, in, Leaky Black is really showing up. Leaky Black has been playing really well off the bench. He recently made his first start against the Lakers, and although that was a loss, and he didn't play super well, I think it's great to see him start getting in the rotation a bit yeah. more. Yeah, definitely um, deserved. Yeah, it definitely deserved. March Madness superstar. March Madness Leaky superstar, Black. and then uh, to to kind of retread on the. The All-Star Reserves, I am a, basically, I hate all Atlanta sports as a Charlotte fan, but I can acknowledge, acknowledge, (laughs) flan, ah, uh, I can acknowledge that Trey Young's had a really great year, and I, you're acknowledging, I'm acknowledging, your tribal Trey, my tribal Trey, (laughs) and uh, I think, I think it was kind of, I was a little, not, well, I was very happy, but a little disappointed that he didn't make the All-Star game uh, at first, and I think, he, I mean, the circumstances of how he got a spot, I'm not a huge fan of, but he definitely deserved the spot yeah, he got. Yeah. And, you know, going to Scotty Barnes, he's he's taking a big step up, like you said, Chris, and I think that's it's the kind of thing you owe. I think, I think that's really the kind of thing that I love seeing in basketball. I think in the NFL you maybe don't see that as often in some of the bigger positions just because, like, you know, it's such a cutthroat league and, like, it's hard to step up. It's hard to step up time. in yeah. that way. There's 82 games. If you step up a couple games, then it's like, yeah, oh, you, you get a few more minutes every game. That's that's way different than a NFL, NFL game where you're two only in. Maps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I, I, these reserves, I'm, I'm excited to see and I'm, I'm excited to see this All Star game. Yeah, just a couple other names. Uh, Jalen Brunson, I thought he should have been a yeah, starter. Yeah, he should have been a starter. I think we all agree he deserves it. Uh, Maxi deserved it. He's yeah. had a great season. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, of course, of course made it. Yeah. He really deserves. He's he's been so good since going over to the East. He was great in the West too. My thing is, if who do we think Trey Young would have been over, realistically, just looking at who was in, because I, I feel like he deserved to be a reserve prior to injury. Yeah. Uh, I my only thing with saying Jalen Brown is I think he could have been over Jalen Brown, but Jalen Brown's both yeah. a guard and a forward, so it kind of depends on how they placed him in. I don't know if they put him as a front um, or backcourt kind of guy. Only other person I couldn't like. I mean, you can go either way with this, with the two, but Maxi, like. I think Maxi's yeah. one. I honestly think Dame. Dame too. I, I mean, I, 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 okay, I think Dame is still really good, but he just wasn't like. All he's not an All-Star starter. Not All-Star. Not this season. At best, a reserve. I would say Halliburton, but he's done 
he's so good offensively. The the efficiency he gives out for that team is I can't phenomenal. Yeah, no. Because his numbers don't look the greatest when you're first looking at them. You see his assist numbers, they're like, oh, he runs that entire team. Yeah, like he yeah. is the offense pretty much. Yeah, and they've performed. Yeah. Then so. the Western Conference starters or reserves, I think all of these are probably deserved. Maybe there's a few guys I think I could take off here. But I would say, I mean, Devin Booker deserved it. Yeah, Devin He's had a great season. Even though some of his teammates have been underperforming, he's played fantastic. Uh, Steph Curry obviously deserves it. He's yeah. still one of, if not the best player in the NBA. It, a lot of ways you can look at it. Yeah. Still think he's probably. I just don't see anybody. Still on the think he's one of the best guards in the league, maybe the best guard in the league. It's just hard to go over him right yeah. now. Uh, Anthony Davis, I think we all. Yeah, you can. He deserved it. He's yeah. had a great season. Lakers, I think, are a team that are always going to have two guys in there if they yeah. can. If they have two big names, and they do. Uh, Anthony Edwards definitely deserves it. Yeah. He's played. He's Ball. been great. Yeah, yeah. Paul George is one I'm a little shaky on. He's just having a good year, though. He's having a good year, but the Clippers, to me, are still they're just they, not that they, good. Hey, they've, they've been on a roll. I know they have, but, wait, roll, but when they go to the playoffs. They've been they, on they a roll a couple times, so and then they go to the, the thing. playoffs. Okay, here's the thing. They play good in the playoffs, they just can't stay healthy. That's true. They can't stay healthy. They but there's nothing to be indicating that this will be a different year. Yeah. That's, you I, just got to see. It's just, I, but I also think the West is wide open this yeah. year. The West open. It's just... A lot of I like the Clippers team. I, I do too. I, I like it. I'm a fan of what they, how they've built it. They just got to stay healthy for me. They should have never gotten rid of SGA. I don't think that was a great idea. This, okay, my thing with that, he probably wanted to develop the way he did on the show. That's true. In hindsight, it's 2020. It kind of, like, they didn't know who's going to yeah, be this. Like, yeah, like, I, I, it, it wasn't a bad. He showed some flashes while he in showed flashes, LA, but, but not, not like this. Not like that. Not what he's doing right now. Right now, he, he actually might be the best guard in the NBA. I'd, I'd be confident saying he is the best guard in the NBA. And then uh, Carl Anthony Towns. It surprised me. I think he deserved it. Yeah, uh, nobody else you can really after he dropped, you know, what was it, 63 in 62, that yeah. 62 in that loss to the Hornets. 62. Point I think it was clear burger. he was going to make it. Yeah. What'd you say? That 62 point nothing burger. Just kind of losing to the Hornets. I mean, has to be a nothing burger, doesn't it? Some more All Star antics. Uh, the dunk contest. They actually have a star in there. It's very rare now. Do they rare. get a superstar in the dunk contest? Jalen Brown. I'm excited because he he. It's very good at the, the jumping and the running and the dunking of the basketball. I think he does that very well. I'm trying to think if there's anyone missing. For obviously, Aaron Gordon, I would like to see in it again. Yeah, but he said he probably won't do it. Yeah, again. he'll never do it again, probably. Jamie Jaquez kind of surprised me. But he, I, 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 I've seen some of his He can dunk. Yeah, he can, yeah he can no, he's, he's yeah. not bad. Mac McClung makes sense. Yeah, you can uh, bring him back. I really don't know enough about Jacob Toppin to me say neither. that makes sense. When I saw that name on... on uh, uh, I, I, thought work. Work. Yeah, I, I thought it was a honestly. I thought it was Obi talking about I thought it was talking about Obi. Because Obi was in a dunk contest. He performed yeah. well. Yeah, when I saw, saw Jacob talk, I'm like, well, Obi Toppin renamed himself or something? And then <laughs> like, oh, oh. He has good genes, I think. I think yeah. those family yeah. genes are really yeah, good. They look just alike, so I'm like, They oh, do. Man. I'm excited to see what he can do, though. I mean, yeah, yeah. last year, I feel like this situation people had with Mac McClung, no one really knew what he could do. I mean, I remember what he did in high school. Like, that's how I knew yeah. him was a, a high school dunker. Right. But. I didn't know much. I didn't know he was in the league yeah. until he uh, he got signed by the Sixers and then showed up in the dunk contest that he won it. So maybe Jacob Toppin can do it. I'd like to see it. That'd be cool. Yeah, you got to give him a speech saying nobody knows your name. And then... Yeah. It feels like hating. Yeah. And nobody, for a dunk contest, that just feels like a lot. It's just <laughs> a way to motivate him, man. It works. <laughs> it's a dunk contest. Hey, it worked. It and worked. We will get to see the Sabrina Ionescu and, uh, yeah, yeah. and Steph Curry three-point shootout. I am excited for that. Yeah, I, I think I that'll be that interesting. Too. I think she might win. Yeah. She can shoot the ball. She She's a really good shooter. She's fun to watch. Yeah. I think WNBA gets really bad rap, and I'm I'm tired of acting like it doesn't. Yeah. yeah. It's actually a super enjoyable sport it's, to watch. It's enjoyable, and it's about to get better. Especially man. when it's competitive. Yeah. It's about to get better when Angel Reese and Caitlin, Caitlin Clark, Clark and all them come in. Haley Van Lith. And it's about to get. I I will say I think. Uh, College basketball, women's college basketball is more enjoyable yeah, more than insane. WNBA. But I'd also argue that for football. I'd almost argue that for uh, basketball. I think college sports are just more enjoyable because you have much more of a, an identity with the team. Yeah. And uh, But I do love pro sports. It's not like I don't love yeah. them. But I, I just think the, the college sports have it set up better where, or had it set up. I think NILs kind of changed the, the complexity of the sport a little bit where it's now... You know, a lot of it is based on money, 
but it used to be based on passion. And I kind of miss when it was based off passion. But back to my spiel about the WNBA, I, I really have been enjoying uh, what they put out, especially last season. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I watched the, that last game in fi uh, yeah, the that finals. Yeah, that was a good game. That was a fun one to watch. I was sad the Liberty didn't win. Because they, they had an all star lineup. Like everyone on their team is like an all star. It's crazy. Opinions WNBA? I think it's a good watch. I mean, I, I've I haven't watched too much, and I'm not gonna pass. I, I don't know enough about the game of basketball in general to really pass too much judgment. I found it exciting when I have watched it. Uh, like you said in the finals last year, <coughs> sorry, yeah, last season, yeah. I thought the Aces were a very talented team, and it was it was fun, it was fun hoops to watch. It's and just Parker gets another ring. Yeah, it was nice. She didn't play. Yeah, but she didn't play because she, she was injured, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm I'm I think basketball is the kind of sport where it doesn't. I think the difference between men and women isn't such a crazy difference in terms of how entertaining the game can be. That's fair. Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not saying it's a it's a one to one, but I think oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's different from other sports where I think you can watch a game of either the WNBA and the or the NBA and be sufficiently entertained if you're a fan of basketball. You'll get so, you'll get what you want out of it. You'll I get think. exactly you'll get what you want out of it. There might be slight differences in terms of personal preference and whatever. I mean, like for me, it's. The NBA has the Charlotte Hornets. The WNBA used to have a Charlotte team, but no longer does. So it's a bit easier for me to get into the uh, NBA because there's a team I can cheer for. That's, true. that's you know we're from my hometown. Yeah, like you're right next to it. It's a lot easier. To yeah, support. I understand that. But I do think a lot of people just give it a bad rep because there's not a lot of like dunking. Yeah. yeah. And I I just feel like that's a, a silly reason to not enjoy something. It's yeah. because they're not as athletically inclined as the men, but they. They do a lot of stuff better, too. They pass the ball a lot better. I think they play better defense. I think that's why the games are so low scoring. It's not like they can't score. Yeah, they, you see some of these just, players, they're, they they're dropping 30, 40. But the defense is so much better that it's just a, a much more enjoyable watch if you want to watch a close basketball game. Because yeah. the NBA can get out of hand quick. Yeah. Like the top team and the bottom team are going to be very different. I feel, I feel like WNBA, a lot of them are very similar. I think I, that's what I enjoy about it. A bit more parody. Yeah. I think like what you're saying with like with Chris, with Kip, Caitlin Clark, Andrew Reese, and Haley Van Lilith, with them coming in to the WNBA, I think there's going to be less of that like dislike of the WNBA yeah. in the future because Caitlin Clark can probably shoot the ball better than anybody on Clemson's basketball team right now. Caitlin Clark can shoot the ball probably better than anybody on earth, if I'm being realistic. I think, I think she's better than Sabrina. She, be. I think Sabrina's fantastic. I love watching Sabrina play. I think Caitlin Clark is hands like head above heels, just better than. I think she might be the best basketball player in the world, honestly, which is crazy to say. I, I think if you you know if you put her in the NBA, that's a lot different. Yeah. There's obviously yeah, different skill sets, NBA, but yeah. I think just from a pure skill point and a pure basketball standpoint, if you compare her to the women's game to what LeBron is to the men's game, I would take her to the women's game over what LeBron is to the men's game, right now. Okay. And, and like, not all time, no, yeah, because yeah. he's going to be all time. <laughs> like, but at this current point, I don't think there's a single person that is more that is or can be more impactful to the sport than she yeah, will yeah, be I to the that. WNBA. Because <laughs> nobody, like, it doesn't get a lot of eyes because a lot of people like to disrespect it. You see yeah. the social media comments. You see everyone talking about, you know, the no one cares, yeah. all that. And it, it's a, it gives it a bad outlook on casual fans. And I think a lot of people know Caitlin Clark is the real deal. And I, I haven't really seen anything bad about her when it comes to like the social media comments. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is a, she gets a positive uh, reaction from yeah. everyone. And I think that'll definitely help the WNBA when she goes in there. And I do think she'll dominate. Like, I'm not saying she's not going to be the best player because she is. And I, I don't think it's going to be close. But I think getting someone like that will kind of change the outlook on sports as a whole. Yeah. And we'll kind of give a lot of sports that don't get the credit they deserve, give them more credit. Now that was really weird to go off of Mac McClung to, <laughs> to, WNBA. to WNBA ball, but I feel like that's something we haven't talked about much is just the differences in sports. And, you know, National uh, Girls and Women in Sports Media Day is coming up. It's tomorrow. It'll be released on the – or the, sh the this show will be released on the uh, the day of. National Girls and Women's Sports Day, so I think it's, I think it's nice to just give them a little respect for what they've done. Yeah. 
Hornets lost to the Lakers. You talked about that. Yeah. Ricky Black. Uh, Brandon Miller had a good game. He did. Brandon Miller had a. Miles Bridges had a really good game. He had what, 45? He d- uh, it was yeah. He had a, he had a 40, and um, it was a yeah. tough loss. It, it you know, but you know, you're going up against the greatest of all time. You know that things gonna happen. And uh, I was it was really a kind of game where Brandon Miller played well and Leaky Black got to start. That's really all I cared about. Obviously, I wish we could have won. We didn't, but you know, that's how it goes when you run into LeBron. That's cool, but when did you become such like this big LeBron fan like that, man? Um, well, I think a, a lot of it was, was you know, TikTok. TikTok. I got into basketball more. The 2023 remake of House Party was a big okay. influence on my ball that's knowledge. What it was. I think. I think. Um, that's, I think we just found out what it was <laughs> there. When LeBron defeated one of the main characters, 11-0 in a pickup game, I knew that was my goat. You know, I never saw MJ in any of the House Party movies, so I think I think that kind of speaks for itself. So yeah, that's probably that's why. Funny. And it gets funnier a little bit. I think one thing I love about how at least our show has changed is that we've just kind of, we have the topics in front of us and we love to go off them. Yeah. And it's, I, I do think that just makes it so much more compelling to watch because you have no clue what's coming. Like my random WNBA spiel. I don't think any of us thought about that. I didn't even think about that coming into the day. I don't think House Party would be mentioned Yeah, House, at all. A house Party mentioned, well, with Nash, I, I feel yeah. like House Party is always going to be mentioned at some point. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I just think the Hornets... At some point, they need to put themselves into a position that makes them uncomfortable. You know, that's, that's my favorite. That's my favorite. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so I just think that'll help them. But I, we do have some exciting news for this week, and I'll wait until we finish all this to you know tell the tell our adoring fans our really exciting news for what our plan is on the weekend. I'll let Nash do it too because he's the host. Uh, Premier League, Arsenal defeats that. No good rotten Liverpool club that no one seems to be a fan of. Uh, super mediocre. 3-1 win. I'll take it. Especially against Liverpool, who's actually been performing really well oh, recently. Like, I, I'll say this. I know we lost 3-1, but that's the worst we played all year. Like That's, that's, the, only, that's the only game I looked at this year and like, oh, yeah, we should have lost. Like, I mean, Arsenal's second goal when both Van Dyke and Allison missed the ball in the box. Well, it's just it's unfortunate when you have, you know, when you're you're playing the best the best club in the world, and it's it's hard to beat a team like Arsenal when they're at the top of their game, best club in the world. Not top of the table, but not top of the table, but hey, we'll be back. Back in the title race. This was exactly. a, it was a statement win for yeah, Arsenal. Nash. You can't back in the title race. And hey, y'all will be getting some championship titles next year. You'll be in the race. Yeah, championship league title. Yeah, championship league. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like relegation. Man, you defeated West Ham 3-1. Unfortunately, you know, Nick and Chelsea couldn't pull it out this week. Manchester United's finally figured it out just halfway. It happened quite well. Halfway into the season. Yeah, but it was a little late. I think their front three, Hoyland, Rashford, and Garnacho, they're good going forward in the Premier League. Wait one minute. What, what has he been up to this? He was, he wait- was, he was struggling. He was waiting on a miracle. He was, he was waiting on a miracle. <laughs> I love those videos. That guy seems like he's such a nice dude, too. It's so hard to hate that video. He's at the game this week. I know. And Hoyland didn't even come up to him. I was a little... Wow. That's just respectful. Some celebrities, man. He finally got his first goal, though, a couple weeks ago. So that was nice. They are, they are starting to play better there. Rashford is, Rashford's been really good for a really long time. Yeah, he just started heating up, though. I mean, yeah. Early in the year. This season, yeah. yeah this season. But, like, just in the, his career, he ha- Oh, yeah, he's been good. He's been good for a long time. I'm trying to think of the last time, like, I... Didn't know who Marcus Rashford was. Yeah, I don't even watch soccer that much. Yeah, it. even when I didn't watch soccer, I knew who that was. Yeah, Marcus Rashford was balling. Because of LeBron, of course, but like, yeah, I knew who he was. That's fair. LeBron, when he's naming his favorite soccer players, you know, everybody on everybody Liverpool. Everybody on Liverpool. He didn't even know that was the leading goal, goal, goal uh, score. He got to yeah. stop talking about LeBron. This is, <laughs> this is becoming a problem. Nash got us off on a tangent, and now it's, it's all LeBron. You've worked it in. Yeah, you've worked LeBron into our minds. Uh, Wolves defeated Chelsea 4-2. Chelsea's worse than they were yeah, last year. Yeah, yeah, Chelsea's hey, we back. Lost, we, lost, we lost, but I'm glad they lost. They can't, right, they I, can't I, fire that. their coach because they spent too much money in the, um, the getting transfers. They won't be able to hire another coach. I just yeah, they, I just think it's hilarious. They ain't like that, uh, Raiders, <laughs> they ain't like that Raiders situation where they couldn't fire the coach. <laughs> They're going to have to call somebody off the street. Yeah. Beg them to come coach. Yeah. The fans don't even want to coach. It's just... 
Fernley gets points. Unfortunately, Fulham also got points. So that doesn't help your, your race out of relegation at all. Just, you know, it's, it's, you got to look at what's going on now and what was going on. I think we've had, I mean, we haven't had a win in the last few, but I think we've come close a few times and we're, play, we're, we're playing better. And I think it, uh, with the way that we have our, uh, with, the, with the momentum we have, you don't count the Man City game. I think this is a team that could absolutely pull a win out in the, in the next week or two, especially this Saturday <laughs> <laughs> against a certain club. You smiling because you, you know that ain't happening. Who would that certain club be? Huh? Move a right top of the table. Um, but, I, you know, I could see a 2-0 win for us this week. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't think it's crazy FIFA. to say that. <laughs> not even. Before I'm like, I've seen him play. It's not going to be a 2 0 win on FIFA. <laughs> Beginner difficulty. It's still be a draw. I don't know if I have confidence in him winning. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of red cards on his side. <laughs> Always. And then uh, Brighton defeats Crystal Palace 4 1. I'm not surprised at anyone. Statement win. It was our, I think it's Crystal our, Palace. It's our biggest win over Crystal Palace. It's, only rivalry, it's really. Crystal Palace. We tied last time 1 1. This was. Honestly, the best performance I've seen, Brett. One of the best. I was going to say, better than It was Tottenham. Crystal Palace. Let's be real. On par with Tottenham. The no, Tottenham game was more impressive, bro, because I didn't think y'all was going to win. That, that was a little Remember impressive. when y'all lost that, what was it, 5-2? 5-1? Five, five, oh, it was 6-1, six, six, one, but one. Aston, Aston Villa is pretty good this yeah. season. So. I just, it just came into my mind. Hey, but we're winning like games that. now. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's all that matters. That's three points. The Seagulls and Brighton are loving this right now. Uh, let's get to WWE. We've we've recently started integrating this more, which I enjoy. I think we all enjoy it a little bit. Real sports. <laughs> this is ball knowledge right here. Uh, looks like we're heading to the direction of Rock and Roman at WrestleMania, in a situation where Cody Rhodes has worked his way from being fired by the company to being the biggest star in wrestling, to being the biggest star in the WWE, to main eventing a WrestleMania. Losing his spot after winning the Royal Rumble. The biggest match you can win. Twice. Yeah. Bet to bet. Back to back Royal Rumbles. Only the fourth man to ever do it with, what was it? It's Hogan, Austin. John Michaels. And Michaels. I think that's it. So three of the top five biggest names in all of wrestling history. And then Cody Rhodes, who will cement himself at that point once he gets his title. And I think it's time for them to realize they messed up. And I think with their... A little press conference, whatever they're doing Thursday. The I hope Cody just come and like do go to Daniel Bryan and just like. I I think they're going for a triple threat. Yeah, I, yeah, that's what that's what they need to do. I do, do think it's and have Cody beat both of them. I think it's pointing at a triple threat right now, yeah. especially because I've heard rumors that this is a work by WWE. Yeah. This wasn't a shoot. But I also heard rumors that it is a shoot, and they realize that they can make it a work, and they can really capitalize off this now. I mean, everyone is talking about this. Yeah. It's not like. It's just in the wrestling fan base. It was the biggest trend on Twitter. ESPN picked it up. They don't pick up WWE very often. Yeah. This is huge to get picked up. George Kittle was talking about yeah. it. IGN posted it. They, don't, they have nothing to do with sports whatsoever. Exactly. TMZ, we saw uh, TMZ and Bleacher Report also reported on it. Killer Mike was, well, Bleacher Report has a whole thing covering WWE. Though. But you know what I mean. Uh, but their main the, thing, the, like, the amount it was of, massive. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I saw Killer Mike post about it. He, he, he said him and Cody were going to finish their stories and, Killer Mike kill, uh, finished, his, finished his, won his Grammy, Mike, man. yeah, deserved, very deserved, but Cody's going to take that route, but everyone talks about it, I know, like, I've just seen it outside of the WWE bubble, which is really cool to see, yeah. you really don't ever see WWE get pushed out anymore, yeah. I feel like a lot of people have Different stopped pain, watching, yeah. really, I mean, honestly, but it's also as big as it's ever been, Yeah. and The Rock isn't the draw anymore, yeah. he's no longer... It just, it's he is a draw. He, yeah, he a draw, don't get me wrong, but it, I'm sorry to cut you off, but it's a Maybe. lot of stuff that I'm just thinking back on that The Rock has like done on the creative side, like being CM Punk at the Royal Rumble. Didn't like, have to and, do that. And hindsight, back then I hated CM Punk because he was always being John Cena, so I hated him, and I was glad The Rock won. So hindsight, looking back on it, now I'm like, why would he do that? Yeah, why, would why he, did you have to do that? And why did you beat John Cena the, the year in the WrestleMania before? And that, that shouldn't have happened either. Or it's supposed, to, it's a, it's supposed to be a pass in the torch type. Or when uh, when he beat Eric Rowan for in like six seconds at that one right. random WrestleMania. I, what was the point of that match? Yeah. No one cared. Yeah. It's I get The Rock's name being attached to it's massive. I'm a huge fan of The Rock. I yeah, love The Rock. Me too. But it's just, if you know if he shows up Friday 
there'll be a little cheer come out of me. Then I have to switch. I have, to revert, going, to, yeah. I have to revert to my we want Cody because he deserves it. This is more of a case of not who's the biggest draw, this or that. WrestleMania is the draw. CM Punk said it. WrestleMania is the draw. Right. It's one of the biggest events in all of sports every year. It draws 100,000 fans, or 100,000 fans, really like 70, 80,000 fans a year in one place to watch wrestling. Yeah. You don't really hear about that. Because this isn't a company as funded as like the NFL or the NBA yeah. or all that. This is a wrestling company that was nothing 40, 50 years ago that has made itself the one of the premier live entertainment companies in the world. And their biggest show shouldn't rely on a Hollywood actor. Yeah. I, I think that's my issue yeah. with it. And I do like The Rock. I'm glad he's back. I it's fun. I want to see the match, but I want to yeah. see it be a triple threat. I I want to see The Rock and Roman one on one. Yeah, I want to see not one on one too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, They could have pulled this trigger two years ago, and I would have been okay with it. They yeah, should did. They supposed to did it in 2021. Yeah, not now. Exactly. It's yeah. it's too late now. I feel like because we saw The Rock after eating the stuff with Jinder, he was gassed yeah. and he hit a people's elbow and he was yeah. tired. Yeah. I I just don't think I see the vision that they see if yeah. this is actually if they're going straight Rock Roman. If that's the vision they see, I don't see it. Uh, and there's a little glimmer of hope. I believe Cody Rhodes tweeted something out like, "Trust like, me." Yeah, trust me. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I trust him. Because of course, I, I'm kind of in the same boat as Nash. I mean, we're both relatively like new wrestling fans, and so I came in when I started watching WWE. It was like this was at Cody at WrestleMania, so yeah. I just instantly became a fan. At this point, I'm just like disappointed because mm-hmm. of course I want to see him at WrestleMania. And you said Daniel Bryan. Yeah. I've seen that, of course, because I failed my WWE funky quiz that Luke gave me because I don't know ball knowledge of WWE. But I've seen, like, stuff on Twitter about him, and, I've, of course, I've... It's it practically... I'll, I'll give a rundown on that. Daniel Bryan was the biggest wrestler in the world. They didn't even put him in the Royal Rumble. Yeah. It was the year everyone thought he was going to win the Royal Rumble, go to WrestleMania, win the title. Instead, they don't put him in the match. So, like, what are they doing in that situation? It was going to be Batista and Randy Orton at Mania. Yeah. Somehow, Daniel Bryan got a bunch of fans to get in the ring and hijack an episode of Raw until they gave him the match, which I think was part of the storyline, but still it yeah. worked out. Yeah. And Daniel Bryan goes to WrestleMania. He has to face Triple H first, to, and he beats Triple H. Then he goes to the main event and beats uh, Batista and Randy Orton. He makes Batista tap out. And it's probably the coolest moment in all of wrestling. Yeah. I think it's to me, it's the greatest moment I've ever seen in wrestling. That and Kofi winning the title, because that was just deserved. But if Cody, he already won the Rumble. So it's not like you can be like, oh, well, he didn't deserve a spot. He just beat won he got on other spot. dudes. Yeah. It's, it's hard to say, oh, you know, they never planned on him being the guy, because he's obviously the guy in the company. And giving it to The Rock, who'll be there for a month or two, and then not come back for a couple of years, and then come back right. in a month or two, and it's, it's just going to be that. Yeah, it's the same cycle. With, with the it's, it's unfortunate that they could be taking Cody's opportunity to become the biggest star in all of wrestling, which I think he already is, but to really become like, yeah. this will put him above biggest star in wrestling. This will put him in superstardom around, just around the world. Like, his name yeah. will be known if he beats The Rock. Yeah. You know, it has. The Rock has such a big reach. I think it's time for him to realize that maybe I should put some other guys over, not just your cousin who's already a massive star. Yeah. But that's that's my interpretation of the story. And I think Cody finishes the story of WrestleMania wins the WWE title. I yeah, think it's. I think I they're want, gonna flip the switch on it, yeah. and they're gonna realize they messed up. And we'll see Seth, Sammy, and Drew probably. Yeah. Love to see Sammy win the title. But Seth said that that world title was the one Cody's dad always wanted, which is not true. Yeah, that's not. It wasn't even a title when Cody's dad was alive. He was just out there talking, yapping. It it was always the WWE title that Dusty wanted and deserved, and he should have had it. One of the greatest wrestlers ever, and he never won that belt, which is just shocking. They put him in polka dots, man. How do you put Dusty Rhodes in polka dots anyway? Way off topic. But still, Cody... I feel like this has become more of a personal thing for him than just business now, because it really is like it's his family's business in this in this industry, and him not being put in the title match that he deserved—it's just shocking to me. That's yeah. all. That I'm going to stop there because I could keep going on about it. Chris, we're going to overtime. You want to update us on your franchise? Uh, so yeah, 
it's, it's not a fun start at all. Like, I, I'll just say that. Resign Derrick Henry. My, my, my O line need, yeah, I need to fix that O line. <laughs> I, I really need, like, I dropped back three seconds later, I'm getting sacked. And then I resigned Derrick Henry, so that's fine. And I got, I got D Hop out of it. He sold me so bad. I was like, you got to go, man. I traded him to, I traded him to the Eagles, got a first rounder. So yeah. there you go. So. Riley? I'll just a quick rundown. So, uh, Kylian Mbappe is apparently going to Real Madrid over the summer. It's about time. He need, he's 25 years old. He needs to get out of League One, and Real Madrid will probably win everything for the next five years if he's added to the team. League in. What? League in. Oh, my bad. My French. <laughs> Actually, I am French. So it's bad on me then. <laughs> Nash. Uh, in the world of Formula One, the greatest driver of all time, Lewis Hamilton, is making a mega money move to Ferrari, leaving Mercedes, which he has been on for about the past decade, to, and he'll be leaving after this next coming season. Very big news. I mean, this is the, you know, he's the biggest name in F1. He's a seven-time champion, should be eight-time. Most wins of all time, just a phenomenal driver. And it's, it's just crazy to see him make that jump because his whole career he's been kind of beefing with Ferrari when he was at McLaren and at Mercedes. So it's um, I'm excited to see it just because, you know, Lewis Hamilton is always fun to watch. Eight-time champ. And he's got his own Fortnite skin. He does. He's got his own Impressive. Fortnite skin. And, uh, NFC won the Pro Bowl in that, that fun flag football game. <laughs> All I got out of that game was when flag football gets added to the Olympics, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> Tyreek Hill is torching oh the rest God. of the world. That, that's all I got out of the game. Uh, Nash, what, talk about the extravaganza for the weekend. All right, so this coming weekend, we have a very special trip planned to the city of Charlotte, CLT. You know, we have Friday night SmackDown in Charlotte, and then the next night, Hornets versus who? Grizzlies. The Grizzlies on Saturday. Yeah, it's going to be a Charlotte extravaganza. I think, I think we'll see a Hornets one this week, and I'm going to be honest. I can feel a W incoming. <laughs> That's all we have. Thank you all for watching. We will see you all next week.